Okay, Wexford are back in action this weekend. Um, this time it's a trip to Dublin and Crow Park um, to face Dublin, who of course are on the back of uh, two wins and a loss from their three games. Delighted to say I'm joined by Martin Story. Martin, how are you doing? I'm very good, thanks. Very good. Yeah, you must be feeling pretty good about Wexford at the moment after beating um, Kilkenny at the weekend. Of course, the performance against Clare wasn't particularly good, and like wind has obviously been a huge factor in both games, kind of making a mockery out of the games. But you must be feeling pretty good about Wexford at the moment. Yeah, I mean, there's a great buzz down here. I mean, there's huge support. I mean, you'd be lucky to get a seat in Wexford Park last Sunday for the Kilkenny match. I know I'd be all rivals and stuff. But I mean, in the middle of February with a gale force wind blowing, you were still lucky to get a seat in it. Like, you know, I suppose the, the Kilkenny and, and, and Clare match were very similar in the sense that both, team, both teams are coming with a run as in the second half. And, and I suppose we introduced the big guns and, and probably that was the difference. Like what we brought in off the bench, like, you know, was a was huge. The, the, the experience that, that David could pull on on the bench was huge, like last Sunday against Kilkenny. And there's always a bit of a there's always a bit of an extra bite, an extra bit of a cut when Kilkenny and Wexford are at it anyway, like you know. It must be great that, you know, when you think of the, the years that prece- that came after two thousand and five, there was years there where Kilkenny were beaten by by cricket scores in the championship, that it's turned around so much in the last few years, especially since Davy took over. Well, it wasn't just us they were beaten by. I mean, people think that's just a Wexford thing. I mean, to beat Waterford in an all Ireland final be the highest winning margin ever, like you know what I mean? Kilkenny blew literally everybody out of the water there for about six years with that team. But is that not the greatest hurling team ever of all times? Like that Kilkenny team we say for that 10 or 12 years. I reckon it is anyway. But it is in my time. Um, so I don't think they were beating us by any more than anybody else. But they were beating us more often because the fact that we were in Leinster. So to, to get out of Leinster, you had to play Kilkenny at some stage. And that was the unfortunate part of that. But these players now, these younger lads... We say they have gone into their mid twenties. Their history of Kilkenny growing up wouldn't be beaten after beaten after beaten after beaten. So they wouldn't have that fear of 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 uh, for the last four or five years. Like and our results show that. Like you know, just to look at what um, John Milan said the other day, he he was talking about the evolution of this Wexford team, and he said for many years we looked down on the sweeper system. Kevin Foley just sitting in the pocket, but we saw last year against Tip that the sweeper system has evolved and gone on to another level. In Wexford Park, I watched how their defenders come in waves, and I think they're going to transform the game. It's very hard to counteract. What do you make of that? Well, I think it's very rich coming from a team that play, used to play two sweepers for a start, like Waterford did, you know, under Derek McGrath. He seems they to be on your side, though. They often play two and three sweepers. But, so, I mean, it's it's a case of, of just the game evolving and changing. And I mean, I think we're a lot more attacking based now than we were two years ago under Davy or three years ago. Like they are sweeping up the field, absolutely going behind and trying to go on the blind side. I mean, I could see it. I could see it on on Sunday. Rory O'Connor was added. Sean Murphy was added. I'm giving away stuff now. Like you know what I mean? They were trying to run on the blind side to get a ball across that they could get a pint or a shot off with nobody, nobody within or fifteen yards. It is very, very, very difficult to play against. And I mean. Davy, Davy has the lads absolutely will do anything that he asked them, which which is the biggest part of the whole thing for me. Like I mean, I think if Davy asked the lads to run backwards up Mount Leinster, they would do it, and that's what it's about. It's about unity and it's about the team with a common goal and driving in the one direction and no one pulling separate. And I think Davy has absolutely everybody in that panel eating out of the palm of his hand, like. I, I think Milan is actually complimenting the team and I actually love watching Wexford at this stage. Again, the, the Clare game was dour, but I'd put that down to the, the weather more than anything else. But would you agree that what Davey's doing with the team now, this sort of complete hurling that everybody's almost seen as an, as an attacker once Wexford have the ball, that this is the way hurling is going now and, and everyone might as well get used to it? Yeah, but everybody's also seen as a defender. It's 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 relative to what way you look at it. If you're an attacker, you look at it as a complete attacking mode, and if you're a defender and you're a corner back, you look at it as a complete. I mean, defender mode. I mean, you take Joe O'Connor was excellent, and he was playing corner back, but Joe would be an out and out midfielder come wing forward. We say all his life, so his natural instinct is to attack. Paddy Foley was a wing forward when I was a county minor manager. His natural instinct is to attack. So what he's doing maybe is a playing attack-based defenders. Do you know what I mean? So 
that's that's why it's working that these lads know what to do when they get up the field because if you have played all your hurling in the backs you won't have a forwards instinct you won't have that positional sense you won't have that you won't have that quick movement of hands just to get your shot off when you have that split second but you've been practicing that from the time you're under 10 and 12 when you're a natural forward you know what I mean and D O'Keefe another natural forward like so do you know what I mean? Every one of them, every 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 one of them, really are are are, we say, nearly converted forwards. Like that, that's interesting because I've asked managers before about converting forwards to backs and backs to forwards. Do you think it works more successfully converting a forward to the backs or the other way around? Is there anyone in that Wexford team that used to be a back that's now in the forwards? Not that I can think of. No, the only one, the only one I can ever that, that completely transformed was was probably Brain Whelan and um, Corker. From car, you know what I mean. They were the only two I think that completely transferred with 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 very little um very little interruptions to their to their hurling ability. Like you know, mm-hmm. the two were exceptional players. players like. Well, that's interesting actually because at the moment uh, Chris Crummy he's been operating further up the field for Dublin. He kind of played midfield and at times was surging inside the far full forward line. At one stage he had no hurley because it'd been knocked out of his hands and he was in for a goal if he had a hurley. Um, so. Coming up against Dublin this weekend, who are without Liam Rush, without uh, Eamon Dillon and Danny Sutcliffe the last day as well, but they had a good win over Carlo. Do you think Wexford are in a good spot to, to win this game? Well, if you go on the past three or four years, it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely dead even, I think. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone has the advantage. Wexford might be the fact that they're pulling from a full squad or near enough a full squad might be a little bit more of a strength in it. But again... I mean, I think those things go out the window, really. It comes down to pure hunger and effort because if you go back, we said, 10 or 15 years ago, your team was your strength. Now your panel is your strength. I mean, who finished the strongest now and who can bring on, who can bring on the best subs at the vital time now usually is nearly, is nearly winning the games. Like, you know, so it's, it's all to do with, with, with finishing with your strongest team, maybe rather than years ago was always starting with your strongest 15. Now it's trying to finish with your best 15 on the field. And it's interesting too that the last time that Dublin played, like Dublin hadn't even played in Crow Park in a couple of years, which is amazing to think that it, they're a permanent fixture there in football almost. But um, the last time that Wexford played Dublin in Croke Park, it was a 12-point win for uh, Dublin in 2016. Like, Wexford have really turned it around since. Yeah, well, I mean, Wexford and Davy. I mean, and a lot of credit has to go to Davy. I mean, but, but most of those lads had, had one under 21, maybe one and two or three under 21 Leinster titles. So they had a great belief and they had a great starting base. And, I mean, the potential was always there. If you know what I mean, the potential was there with them. And Davy has unlocked it and opened it up to a, you know, and he's getting the best out of everyone. And I mean, that's that's why I mean, the lads are starting to hurl with a bit of a swagger again. That's what you want. You don't want cockiness, but you want inner belief, like, and that's where the swagger comes from. Like, if you watch Dublin, you watch Kerry, you watch all the top teams playing Tipperary, Kilkenny. They know they can do it. Wexford is starting to get to that level that the belief is there, and the know is, if I do my job we'll be there or thereabouts like you know and like when we were talking at the start of the interview like you were going up to play Kilkenny and you were hoping you'd keep it under 15 pints of defeat like that's gone if you know what I mean and that's like and I mean that's that's the toughness in the brain then and the mental toughness that will help them that they know if they hurl well going up Saturday even we hurl well we do our jobs we can beat Dublin do you, you know what I mean? You, Knowing that you can and hoping that you can are poles apart, like, you know. Do you, do you see much development or, or could you put your finger on any of the developments in players like Conor McDonald, Lee Chin, Matt O'Hanlon, Dio O'Keefe, lads who have been there for years, but now rather than just flashes of it, like, they seem to be delivering most days and it was probably no coincidence that they and Rory O'Connor came on the other day and Wexford were able to see the game out against Kilkenny. Yeah, but they're all very, very talented players that I mean, Kevin Foley was minor for three years. Conor McDonald was minor for three years. Do you know what I mean? Rory O'Connor was minor for two or three years. Lee Chin was minor for two. They would have had, they would have been hurling at the top level of their grade for two and three years. And very few lads play minor, like make a minor county team when he's 15, 16, 17. Like, you know what I mean? And and there was two or three of them did it. And that's how good they were. But I think they are coming to their prime now. They're coming to their prime of their peak physical prowess and they're coming to the, to the peak of their psychological development and they're coming to the 
the belief and to be able to being able to say something and then back it up like you know like talking to talk talking to talk is very easy but you have to walk the walk after it and i think they're just meeting a balance there now of to know what they're worth to know what their self-worth is is worth like you know and, and that's huge when you find out when you get to the stage that you know what you're worth before you go out like and you try and live to that you know sean murphy obviously very well from being an owner to bala man his movement, like, he was very, very good last year when he was moved from that sweeper position to, I suppose, maybe marking the likes of Danny Sutcliffe further out the field, and he definitely outplayed him in that Parnell Park game in the Leinster Championship. Do you think, like, Kevin Foley has become so good at the position now, especially being able to attack from so deep and carry the ball, and he's just, you know, he's a natural forward, like you were explaining. Do you think if Kevin Foley got injured that somebody else could do that job as well as him? Because brilliant and all as Sean was, he probably... He probably wasn't kind of as impactful at that sweeper role as he had been at the start. No, because, I mean, people become aware of what he was doing over the two to three years. So, I mean, I, mean, I think it was the right thing by Davey was, 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 was to change him out of it. And I thought it freed Sean up last year, and I thought Sean had an absolutely excellent year last year. And I was so disappointed that I he would have been one of the lads that I thought would have been in the reckoning for an All Star and he didn't even get a nomination. And if you go back to the if you go back to the semi final again, Tip, when Sean went off with a calf injury, we started to slip because he was he was the one that was coming on the outside for an awful lot and he set up an awful lot that day against Tipperary. I just think it has freed Sean up as well because when you're playing that sweeper role for two or three years, I say it's very very heavy on you on you mentally as well, like you know. And I mean, Kevin Foley seems to be reveling in it, like he's absolutely flying in it. But I mean, I always thought it would have suited a player like Kevin Foley because he has that mobility. He's like, sure, he's a live wire, like, you know what I mean? And that's the way he always played. And he's a touch player and he's a flick player. And he's, you know, he, he, he'll turn on a sixpence and he's gone. Like, so it suits him. And he's great vision. He's great peripheral vision. Like, you know, so it's it's suiting Sean, I think. And it's also suiting Kevin. You which know is, what? Which is great, like, great, like, for the two lads, you know? Like, you know the way last Rory, year was, you was me, question you asked me. I think Rory O'Connor could slot into that. He's so yeah, mobile, yeah. I'm just watching him now, he's dropping deep for a lot of balls. So I'm thinking Rory could, but look at that's down the that's down the road. We need him at the other end of the field at the moment. Last year we, we spoke on, on the Hurling show and off the ball and I, I just took a quote from it. People thought I didn't like Davy, but it's not that I didn't like Davy. I didn't like his game plan, but that's nothing to do with the person. He's a great motivator and passionate as 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 could be about it. But if you went back to the old system, I'd be given out again tomorrow. Where are you at with Davy now and how he sets up the team? Like especially now that at the moment it looks like it's quite successful. Yeah, but we were attacking. We were attacking from corner back now. We were actually. We were actually. Our game plan has has, has developed. Let's say in the last three years to being from very maybe trying to do a damage limitation job to actually attacking from corner back. Like we could have four lads running at the one time now, whereas at that time we had four lads, but they were running in the opposite direction to defend. So, I mean, it's just that the game has evolved. Plus the players have gotten totally used to Davies plan. Do you know what I mean? So they know it inside out. And I'd say it's very, very difficult at the start to hurl in a plan that you maybe you don't understand the complete workings of. You only understand bits of it and your part in it. You don't understand every other player's part in it. So then lads are not covering for each other because they're only trying to just get their own part of it right first before they'll, they'll, fall, before they'll take a chance. But there seems to be just unbelievable trust in it now from the world go with everybody. Like, you know what I mean? No matter where Davey asks them to go, they just go and you seem to, they seem to be doing it with a smile on their, on their face. Like, you know, but then again, Davey is not the only one. Everybody is playing that game now. I mean, anyone that's playing a different game now is playing old school, is, is the phrase, is it, I think? But like, I mean, there's nobody, there, there's nobody playing 15 on 15 anymore. It's gone, like, it's gone, unfortunately or fortunately, however way you want to look at it. The matchups are gone. I miss the matchups. Like, I miss the high ball coming in. Who's going to win it? Who's going to do it? I mean, you go back to last Sunday, there was one high ball or two high balls went in between Conor McDonald and two defenders, and he won the two of them. That'll just show you how good of a forward he's developed into. You talk about the sort of back in the olden days, I suppose, what you're talking about, the 50-50 the balls going in and all that kind of stuff. One thing I was wondering, do you kind of meet up with that the 96 team and, and the boys that you played with that often? Do, do you ever get that opportunity? Oh, we do. We meet once a year or twice a year, yeah. We go, go for a few pints and a bit of grub and we slag the, 
back off each other again. You'd swear you hadn't. Like the bond that we'd have would still be there when you get together. Like the, it take five minutes. Hello, how are you? And then the abuse would start. Like the way it used to be. Like you know, the the the, the, the smart comments would come, and just within ten minutes, everybody would be still just cutting the back off everyone like they were thirty years ago. Amazing. It's amazing for the first five minutes. How was the family? How was the kids? How was so and so? How was this? And then it's back to the to the bit of crack, like you know. But no, we'd, we'd meet for Christmas and go for a bit of grub or a game of golf or if there was anything charity or anything to do now, the lads, everyone would be brilliant for it, you know. And is there anyone in particular that you enjoy slagging? Me, everybody, but sure, everybody bursts me as well, so it doesn't, doesn't matter, like you know. Would you have many, like a couple of years ago, George O'Connor, who of course was famously on that team, would and he was giving us a training session with Kula and um. I remember that he, was, he had his hands up or whatever at one stage and you could see all his fingers were absolutely burst in different directions. You know, textbook hurling sort of injuries. Would you have many legacy injuries from, from your hurling career? Jeez, I'd have a good few, yeah. I mean, I'd have, I'd have a lot of hand problems. I mean, Noah's done about four or five times surgery on it. I had uh, three Gilmore grind surgeries. I had a broken jaw. Uh, I had an awful broken ankle. I had... Uh, I had cartilage done on both knees, and I've, I've none of my front teeth or my own. So it sounds like there, there's very little of you left uh, of the original model of Martin's story. But it was, but it was just what it was. Like I mean, it, it, it was the way it was. I mean, sure, the grind injuries or the Gilmore grind sure was just to do with overtraining and maybe and over exerting yourself. And I mean, sure, I mean, like we didn't wear face guards or helmets, so the nose injuries and the teeth were self-inflicted to the point that to, if it had been now you wouldn't have any of them injuries you know it's just that the, the new rules for the protection come in plus there was a lot more pulling in the air because there was a lot more 50 50 ball coming so i mean you were trying to catch it and the fella behind you was standing and he could pull his living vest at the, in the direction of the ball so it was you know it was a free for all to that point like you know how different is hurling now to to when you were playing like i mean you've obviously explained that people aren't really pulling in the air anymore it seems very old school people aren't whipping on the ball on the ground because you're probably giving the ball away but are, are there any other ways to you that it seems materially very different well it is because there's no matchups i mean you can't say who's going to mark Callanan, who's going to mark Rory O'Connor, who's going to mark TJ, who's going to mark, you don't know who's going, because it's going to be a fellow in front of him and a fellow behind him. If you have a marquee forward, you have a, you have a man in front of him and you have a man behind him. So how he gets on the ball is how good his supply is. It, it, it was one time how good you were winning your own ball. Now it's changed to how good the supply is. If the supply is cut off, well, then you can take a marquee forward out of the game. I mean, we often held DJ Carey for 65 minutes and ended up scoring one, two in the last five, like, you know, and beat you. I mean, I'd say that happened maybe twice or three times with us. You know, in the Leinster final or semi final, you'd hold Joe Dooley or you'd hold John Try, and all of a sudden he'd get two chances, bang, bang, and the ball's in the net or it's over the bar. So, so that doesn't happen in the modern game in that sense that it's. It's going through the lines now. I mean, you'll hear them play. You play the ball through the lines. You play it through the lines. Keep possession. Whereas that's, in our time, no. The cornerback, if he got by his man, he hit it as far as he could. If he passed it out to the centre-back or the wing-back, he got by his man and he delivered it into the full forward line. I'd imagine, that's, that's, I'd imagine you're a man who hasn't too much time for the yellow card. I definitely don't like the idea of it. It's not specific enough to the game of hurling and it just seems like... They've decided, right, there's a bit of cynicism in the game. We better do something about it, even though not too many people who play the game or within the game are actually looking for it. No, for the black card, no. Um, I suppose the backs are dead against it because they're stopping the forward, making the runs out the field. It is gone cynical to pulling the jersey and dragging him to ground when he's trying to make ground to get into a space. Like, that wasn't in the game. That wasn't in the game... We said ten years ago. It's a new, it's a new introduction to the game. It probably comes sort of across maybe from football a bit that don't let him make the run, like you know. But no, we don't need we don't need to tamper with hurling. We absolutely don't need to tamper with hurling. I mean, one time like he could hand pass a goal when that when that change come in. When that change come in, that you couldn't have everyone mad about that, like so. I don't know. I just leave hurling alone. I think I think there's no need to tamper whatsoever or go near it. I don't. 
But see, when you've, when you've somebody that's getting paid to, to try and make a game that's brilliant, better, how can you? He'll have to come with, up, up with some idea to justify his own existence and his own position, like, you know? And to me, and to me, to me the people that are making the decisions are often non ex hurlers like, you know? What do you make of this t- um, proposal whereby instead of it being your four steps with, uh, with possession, that it would be changed to two seconds? Again, it's 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 a, it's a non-productive introduction to the game. You've only ever, by the way, it was always three steps, but you always got away with four. If you're from Kilkenny, you got away with seven. But I don't know, I don't how. know how that worked for the rest of us, but it didn't. Um, can I just ask you, then, who's your favourite player to watch at the moment? Tony Kelly and possibly Rory O'Connor. Yeah, and you... Tobin, Tobin, to me, to me, to me, to me are very, very similar. The Tobin are lefties. They're impossible to hook or block. The Tobin have great pace and have great change of direction. And when they take you on, you can't stop them. And who's going to win the All-Ireland this year? I, I, I don't think there's an out-and-out out, 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 out favourite for it. I think it could be... A, a, I don't know if Tip will retain it. Kilkenny are trying to get there. We're trying to get there. Galway are hoping. Dublin are. I. I. I honestly. I honestly. The day of someone doing what Kilkenny has done, I think is gone. Uh, Limerick are going to come with a big, big shove. Uh, if I was putting on a, if I was putting on a bet, I'd probably like to back Wexford. I just think we're 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 trying real hard. We didn't. We probably had a chance in the semi-final and maybe we just didn't have the experience of the real big, big day in Croker and know what to do. And I think all that experience will stand. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping we'll give it a real, real good last dish. It was very hard to go. It's very hard to go past again Limerick and Tip. But Kilkenny will always be in goal. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say there's going to be any out and out stone mad like money on forever to Rattenford. Like if you had Dublin is in the football. Well, look, you've been very good with your time, and I know your dog is sick, and you have to take him down to the vet. So I uh, appreciate you, you taking the time. Thanks very much. Thanks, Shane.